morning San Antonio starts right now. Another spike in confirmed coronavirus cases here in Bear County. We have the latest numbers and how they break down. Plus a much anticipated stimulus check. How soon the IRS says some Americans can see the money in their bank accounts. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, it is calm and quiet out there right now. It's 64 degrees, but what can we expect for the rest of the weekend? What can we expect tonight? Our Sarah Spivey joins us with your full forecast. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Saturday, April 11th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, it, it's Easter weekend. It Happy Easter weekend. Mm -hmm. Do you have a good Friday? Yes. How about you? <laughs> I had a good, yes. good Friday. Good, no, good yesterday Friday. Yes. we actually ended up having some sunshine in the later mm -hmm. afternoon area. Very unexpected. Well, okay. I hope it wasn't that unexpected. No, <laughs> I may not have watched the news <laughs> on my weekend. But we will kind of see the sim same weather today, guys, where it'll mainly be gray today, but a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon should allow us to warm up. But we're watching tonight for the potential for some strong storms, pretty much in the overnight hours. So we've got a lot to unpack in the forecast. First, let's go ahead and take a look outside. Uh, it is muggy. It's 64 degrees. We've got an east-southeast wind at about 5 miles per hour, 61 up at Bernie stage 64 Canyon Lake and New Braunfels 59 Lost Maples 61 in Kerrville and 62 in Comfort. So for today's forecast again, we're going to mainly hang on uh, to that cloud cover. There's going to be a small chance for an isolated shower or storm only 20% and a few peaks of sun in the afternoon. We should be able to warm up to near 80 degrees. And tomorrow for Easter Sunday, it's actually going to be very beautiful. We'll quickly clear in the morning and it'll become windy though with winds from the west at 15 to 25 miles per hour. However, it's tonight that we want to watch out for the potential for some severe weather. I'll be back in just a few minutes to kind of go through a timeline of what you can expect late tonight. The atmosphere has been supercharged over the last few days. All we need is a kick and we may get that kick tonight in the form of a cool front. I'll be back with a look at that potential for strong to severe storms in just a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. We begin this morning with the latest number of confirmed COVID-19 cases here in Bear County. 11 more BCSO deputies from the recently graduated detention cadet class have tested positive for the coronavirus. Now, their cases are part of the spike that we've seen here in Bear County. This morning, we set at 665 confirmed cases. That's up 50 more than Thursday evening. The total death toll related to COVID-19 in our county now stands at 24. And those cases include a VIA bus driver, a SAWS employee, several HEB employees, five San Antonio police officers, and now 16 Bear County Sheriff's employees. 11 of the cases are from a class of detention cadets who had graduated recently. They had all been placed on leave after the first member of that class tested positive. The Sheriff's Office does not believe any additional detention officers were affected. Meanwhile, the Sheriff's Office dealing with an inmate who tested positive at the jail. It's the first inmate to test positive for COVID-19 at the jail and is isolated. The Sheriff's Office is saying none of the other inmates housed with the patient have shown symptoms, but they are taking precautions if symptoms arise. We're separating them out into smaller groups. We are taking their temperatures uh, twice each day uh, to make sure that we're not going to develop another case. And we're requiring all of them to wear masks. And we will do that for the, for the next uh, 14 days. The sheriff's office is requesting all inmates housed in the affected units be tested. Meanwhile, also a lot of concern about call centers here in San Antonio. After our web team learned two separate call centers have positive cases of COVID-19. Now, a spokesperson for Coles confirmed that the West Side call center on Rogers Run did have at least one confirmed case, but did not specify how many in total. In a statement, the Coles says that there was a deep cleaning of the work area and all of the common spaces and extra measures have been added. The facility is currently open and another company, Wells Fargo, also confirming two employees at their call center on Wiseman Boulevard testing positive. Wells Fargo says they are also conducting a deep cleaning and asking employees who were close to the two employees to not go into the office. The city has stated that call centers may continue to operate but should practice social distancing. And we are not just tracking confirmed cases here in Bear County. In our surrounding counties, numbers also continue to rise. Many of the counties now in double digits. Kamau County reporting 37 cases. Hayes at 79 cases. Guadalupe County, 47 cases. Wilson has 10 cases along with Medina County. Kendall also has 10 cases. But 
Bandera and Gillespie counties remain at one confirmed case each. And San Antonio's Metro Health District continues to reach deeper into the COVID-19 population. Instead of only tracking testing, it will now try to track the recovery of those who contracted the coronavirus as well. Now, the Response Recovery Initiative started operations on Wednesday. It's a six-person team busy now calling those who are not hospitalized to see how they're doing. Our Garrett Berenger talked to Metro Health's Assistant Director of Community Health about what they're hoping to accomplish. For the San Antonio Metropolitan Health District, it's not enough to just tally the sick. They also want to see how they're recovering. It gives Metro Health um, a feeling that we have a sense of how these people are recovering out in the community. Metro Health's epidemiology team already contacts patients to let them know they're positive and to work on contact tracing, then 14 days later to check on their recovery status. But these new checkups are more focused on if patients are maintaining their quarantine and seeing if they need help. They're kind of just grateful for um, having someone reach out and check to see how they're doing. If necessary, they can refer patients to the San Antonio Fire Department's mobile integrated health care team, which can give them a call or even do a home visit to check them out. The goal there is to keep them um, out of the hospital because we don't want um, folks to go to the hospital unnecessarily. The six person team only just started their calls Wednesday, and as of this morning, they still had a ways to go. About 400 people that have tested positive that we haven't had an opportunity to call. So we anticipate that we will be able to get through that list and that we'll be able to um, start calling people a couple of times to see how they're doing and checking back in with them. Another goal is to make sure patients know about the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center's plasma donation program. So when they're well again, they can help others get better too. Harriet says that they give the patients the number to the city's COVID-19 hotline. She says that there's a lot of information there and plenty of people have been calling it. They passed 10,000 calls earlier this week. If you have questions, that number is on your screen. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. And this morning we have an update on the up to $1,200 payment that Americans are expected to receive. The IRS announcing stimulus checks will start being sent out this week. It is the first part of a $2.2 trillion economic relief package aimed at helping Americans amid this pandemic. Now, those who are facing hardship and meet the government's qualifications can expect a check of up to $1,200. People who file tax returns for 2018 or 2019 and have approved direct deposit in their accounts can expect it that way. Now, Social Security beneficiaries will also receive their payments automatically, quote unquote, in the near future. Now, people who have not filed their tax returns, don't have authorized direct deposits, or don't receive Social Security may have to wait weeks or even months to get their stimulus check. The IRS also planning to launch a web portal next week where people can register their bank info online and get their money faster. And time now, 608, 64 degrees out. And the gyms are closed, but that doesn't have to stop you from staying active. Still ahead, how to make an at-home workout part of your new routine while using things you already have. I don't have a treadmill. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> and remembering Selena more than two decades after she was shot and killed, up next on GMSA, a sneak peek of our special airing this weekend. And taking a look outside with live cam, that shot looks pretty clear for the most part, but we are expecting rain. We're gonna ask Sarah all about it after the break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. San Antonio, a second home for Selena. She played at many venues here and also a lot of the scenes from her movie were shot here. Now you can take a tour of all of these sites. We have a map on KSAT.com right now where they're all located. From the location of her Broadway boutique to Market Square where Selena y Los Dinos played during Fiesta. It's crazy because we used to play Fiesta Week and obviously everybody knows Fiesta Week is free. But when we would step on that stage and we would ride outside of Mi Tierra, everyone would see that crowd just lined up. We thought that was the world. And to hear more from Selena's brother and other members of Selena's band, we have a one-hour special. Siempre Selena, tomorrow night at 9 p.m.
very cool. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to watch it. I know that Erica has been working really hard yes, on it yes. and that a lot of members. Oh, hey, Sarah. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> she doesn't mind, though, because she's a huge Selena fan. So I'm very excited to see Siempre Selena tomorrow. So let's talk a little bit about the weather because we do have some uh, busy weather over the next about 24 hours or so. Here's a look outside. Uh, we're seeing cloud cover out there right now and nothing on the radar to speak of. So it's pretty quiet, 64 degrees, uh, and we've got a wind from the southeast at about six miles per hour. It's 64 in San Antonio, but elsewhere temperatures are con consistently in the low 60s. 61 in Kerrville, 62 in Bandera, 59 in Lost Maples at 64 in New Braunfels, 63 at JBSA Randolph, and 63 at Stenson. We've got cloud cover just about everywhere you look, and these clouds today are going to be stubborn. Once again, it'll be a mainly gray day out there, but a few peaks of sun will be expected in the afternoon. Take a look at these winds. winds are from the southeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour, but look up toward Rock Springs and Del Rio. A steady wind from the southeast at 15 miles per hour. Today will be a bit breezy. We'll tap into that Gulf of Mexico moisture and humidity will rise as well. Moisture is one of the ingredients for rainfall uh, and one of the ingredients for strong to severe storms, which will be possible late tonight. Now, I do have to stress, we have the ingredients there. That doesn't always mean that it happens, but my responsibility as a meteorologist is to let you know that the potential for severe weather is there late tonight in the overnight hours. But today for your Saturday, we won't see any severe weather during the day. Maybe one or two pop up showers in the afternoon, but it's really not going to be a widespread rain event today. And then as you can see on the high rise future cast does look like we will see a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon. So here's how the day stacks up. Cloudy skies, isolated rain, 20% percent so it's mainly going to be a dry day and then a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon that'll allow us to warm up to near 80 degrees with the southeast wind at 5 to 15 miles per hour all in all a gray and muggy day uh, and breezy too but late tonight there's going to be a front that will allow for the atmosphere to heat up a little bit. And you can see what I mean by that. On the high-res future cast, right around midnight near Del Rio, we'll see a broken line of storms develop. And as that line moves off to the east, it has the potential to strengthen and become severe. Right ahead of that line, we could have some gusty winds of up to 60 miles per hour. And inside of that line, we could even end up having some uh, quarter-sized hail. But the key word there is it's going to be a broken line of storms. Not everybody will see storms overnight. That's a key too. But the people who do see storms will have the potential to see some strong to severe weather. The best time frame in San Antonio to see storms is between about 3 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock in the morning Easter Sunday. But the good news is we're going to quickly clear out. And most of Easter, in fact, right from when the sun rises into the afternoon, will be sunny. We'll quickly see the skies clear and it'll be a beautiful but windy Easter Sunday. I do have to point out that there is that severe threat. Anywhere you see this orange color, that's an enhanced risk for severe weather, a three on a scale of one to five. Notice that it's generally north of Highway 90 for areas like Austin, San Angelo, the Hill Country, and even up to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. This large swath of the potential for severe weather tells me that there's a lot of uncertainty in the forecast from the Storm Prediction Center. A very large area uh, could see storms that become severe. Again, it's only going to be about a 40% chance though here in San Antonio. Now Easter Sunday, we'll see clearing skies. It's going to be a beautiful day, a high temperature near 84. It'll be windy. Take a look at these winds from the west at 15 to 20, gusting up to 35 miles per hour. Then we'll see a front early on Monday morning. That'll allow our high temperatures to only be in the 60s Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And all next week, we will have a lot of sunshine, a nice improvement from this gray a week last week. Again, we'll keep you up to date about the potential for storms tonight. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. We'll watch out for that. Thank you, Sarah. The beginning of the next week looks great. Yeah. 68 and sunny. <laughs> it's perfect. I'll take it. 617, 64 degrees out. And while we are isolating at home, you might have already run out of Netflix shows to binge, but don't worry. A new comedy special is on the way. Still ahead, who signed the deal and when you can start streaming this fan favorite. And learning a few ways to stay active under quarantine, why gym closers don't have to stop you from getting that sweat on. Do you have a treadmill in your house? I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, I guess I need to step up my fitness equipment. Anyway, we're going to have a look. That's next.
Good morning and welcome back. Gyms are closed and if you're like the millions of people staying safe and helping our community, you are staying home. That's right, but that doesn't mean you have to give up your workout altogether. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz has some easy ways to make home exercise a part of your new routine. Gisela Long is a cancer survivor. She also has asthma and a compromised immune system. She can't afford to be unnecessarily exposed to germs. I'd rather work out from home because that way I feel more safe. It's my own equipment. I know it's clean and I'm not touching something that anybody else touch. With gyms closed, many people are working out at home for physical and mental health and to avoid going stir crazy. If you're not sure what to do, here are some options online training or a virtual training app can give you fitness results and flexibility of doing it on your own time. If you have a treadmill or elliptical, dust it off. Try a little cardio every day to boost energy and clear your mind. If you don't have a machine, find some stairs to run, jump rope, or good old-fashioned jumping jacks. You can also do some high-intensity interval training. Strength training helps preserve muscle mass and maintain metabolism, and it can be done effectively using little more than your own body weight or small hand weights. The goal? To stay active and healthy while you're home. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I did also see something going viral. Um, it's like a 10 push-up challenge. The people on like Instagram and Twitter are challenging each other on. Have you done it? My brother challenged me, but have I you? Felt, and you haven't. <laughs> I felt kind of silly doing it because I was like, "It's it's 10 push-ups, Leo. What are you doing?" Yeah. I was like, okay. Well, just that that's true. Thanks, Sarah. True. 622, <laughs> 64 degrees out. All right, so 23, 23 hours to kill. We're sure that's what a lot of people are trying to do right now. And up next, a comedian coming to Netflix and when he's filling that last hour with laughs. Good morning and welcome back. If you like to laugh, good news for you, comedian Jerry Seinfeld has a comeback on his hands and this time a new Netflix special. So the hour-long stand-up event called Jerry Seinfeld 23 Hours <laughs> to Kill will be out May 5th. So now, Jerry Seinfeld, sorry. Oh, take it, I, know, take no, it over. I was just excited. I'm re-watching Curb Your Enthusiasm, so I'm in Seinfeld mood. Anyway, Seinfeld signed a production deal with Netflix in 2017, guaranteeing two original specials. The first, Jerry Before Seinfeld, that aired in September 2017. I haven't watched it, have you? I'm not, not yet. The streaming service is also currently home to his show Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. I want to see that. And starting in 2021, Netflix will have all episodes of his self-titled sitcom Seinfeld. That's awesome. Something to look forward to. Yes. Something funny. 23 hours to kill. Yeah. Two, 626, 64 degrees out. And maintaining distance at your upcoming social gathering still ahead. What San Antonio City officials are encouraging you to do this Easter weekend? Plus two local facilities being used to house COVID-19 patients who Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says is not allowed to stay there. Good morning and welcome back. 6.30 this morning, Saturday, April 11th. Thanks for joining us this morning and we are expecting some rain. We are expecting some rain. Sarah was telling me before we start at all, expect a muggy day. Is that right? Yeah, we won't necessarily see rain today and there is a small possibility uh, for a, a pop up shower or two today. But really, we're focusing on tonight's forecast, uh, especially in the overnight hours, early pre dawn Easter, where we could have potentially some strong to severe storms again. The keyword there is potentially strong to severe storms. We just have to keep you informed. For now, though, it is muggy outside and cloudy. It's 64 degrees uh, in San Antonio. Let's see if we can take that graphic full there. Uh, and we're looking at temperatures in the 60s elsewhere as well. As for the rest of the forecast today, it's going to be cloudy. We'll be seeing a high temperature near 80 degrees. I'll be back with a look at that potentially uh, strong weather tonight in just a few minutes. Thank you, Sarah. Well, University Health System has been preparing. They've used the last few weeks to learn how places like New York and Washington State are handling the pandemic, preparing themselves for a potential surge in cases. The hospital system has put up a tent that could be used to triage, evaluate, and safely position a high number of patients. All of this in a possibility in the event that they all came in with symptoms of COVID-19. Now, while they haven't had to use it yet, UHS says staff is ready to go if they're needed. 
we can use that to, to change our processes to make sure that we're ready to handle it. And it's given us time to develop things like this and give us the opportunity to do a mock run of our tent so that we're ready to go when we need it. UHS tells us the screening process will help determine which patients are most at risk and who needs to be placed in the emergency room the soonest. University Health System also found a way to get several uses out of N95 masks. They started sterilizing them after each use, which makes them reusable up to four times by the same person. Now, the steri sterilization process happens after each shift. The masks are first visually inspected. If they pass, they're then sterilized using a hydrogen peroxide gas. Then they're tested for contaminants once more before they're returned to the owner. And this morning, we know two local facilities will be used to house COVID-19 patients from nursing homes. During yesterday's daily briefing, both Mayor Ron Nuremberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf announcing Westover Hills Nursing Rehabilitation and Health Care Center and River City Care Center were chosen as these locations. The mayor adding that managers of nursing homes in the region helped to select those facilities, which are currently empty. The only uh, COVID uh, nursing home patients now, I believe, are over at the southeast, and they will remain there. They're not going anywhere. We haven't had any in any other nursing homes. And the mayor and judge say one, more than 100 rooms are available at Westover Hills, and they prefer to use Westover Hills to be used first, given that it's relatively new. Judge Nelson Wolf also adding he did not want any patients outside of Bear County staying at these facilities. And the city also using designated hotel space to help with COVID-19 patients who are having trouble self-isolating away from family in their homes. So if you need help or you need to find a space to isolate, you can call the number on your screen right now, 210-207-5779. And this morning, we know there are more than 18,000 people in the United States who have died because of problems related to the coronavirus. In that number, in that 18,000, more than 2,000 people dying in just the last 24 hours. But there are signs that social distancing across the country to slow the spread is working. Karina Mitchell reports. Doctors on the National Coronavirus Task Force saying for the first time since the pandemic began, the number of cases in the U.S. may be leveling off. But health officials warn this is not the time to become complacent. In New York, the rate of hospitalizations is down and now more people leaving intensive care than going in. Experts say that shows social distancing is working. But concern is rising in some parts of the country, including Michigan and Maryland, where the governor warns they're now seeing a rise in the number of new cases. With millions of Americans out of a job, President Trump announcing he's creating a task force to decide how and when to get Americans back to work. But many raising concerns about reopening the country too soon and before widespread testing is available. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. And although Easter camping is a long-standing tradition here in San Antonio, we want to remind everyone that this year, city and county parks are off-limits all weekend long. City parks have already been closed. They're going to reopen Monday morning. That means no camping or gathering at any of them. Trails are open for walking, running, or biking. The city is also putting out these reminders to encourage social distancing this Easter weekend. And while you might want to invite everyone over for a weekend barbecue, city leaders say you should limit your Easter weekend to spending time with those who live in your own household and keep that egg hunt in your own yard. Remember, the more we all practice social distancing, the more we help flatten that curve. And you this morning, San Antonio police are looking for several suspects after they reportedly caused a gas leak after two people in vehicles were shooting at each other. Now, according to Bear County officials, it happened around 1030 last night in the 800 block of Chipping Drive. Now, police say the suspects were shooting. One of the bullets hit a gas line from a vacant home. And when police arrived, they began to evacuate people from their homes after smelling that gas. Now, CPS was called to the scene and was able to contain the leak. People were allowed to go back to their homes hours later. Now, no injuries were reported. The incident, though, remains under investigation. Also new this morning, flames filling an apartment building on the north side of town. 
Now the fire started around 1130 last night in Kenton Village Apartments on Nacogdoches Road. When firefighters arrived, it was a two alarm fire and they found a building with four units engulfed in flames. Now those flames, this blaze that you look at in your screen right now began to shoot through the roof, causing the chimney to collapse. Fire department able to contain the flames from spreading to other buildings. Now we are told the apartment building was a total loss. Five people have been displaced. Fortunately, though, no injuries have been reported. And time now, 637, about 64 degrees out. And even when all the coronavirus stuff blows over, some may still be on edge when going out to eat. Still ahead, we have a few tips on how to keep safe if you just want to take extra precautions. And it is Saturday, so that means we are checking in with our own David Elder and Texas Eats. Just because you are staying home, which you should be, doesn't mean you can't still enjoy some great food. David Elder helping us explore the local food world, how some of your favorite restaurants are now weathering the storm. And there were Easter treats. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was cute. Those are still cute to look at. Uh, taking a look outside. And eat. Yes, <laughs> and eat. It was a nice day yesterday, expecting a nice week, but we could have storms overnight. We're going to check in with Sarah in just a bit. Good morning and happy Saturday. 641 this morning, and it is Saturday. That means we have Texas Eats and we have a sneak peek from Texas Eats from our own resident foodie, David Elder. In this clip, David Elder is at Nadler's Bakery talking with Alexia about what they're doing to weather the coronavirus storm. Joining us here is Alexia Nadler, operations manager over here at Nadler's. And thank you so much for having us out here today. I know it's a weird time of the world right now. It's, it's a lot of things going on, a lot of adjustments having to be made, especially by bakeries, delis, restaurants, things like that. Yeah. So how has this experience been for y'all? What adjustments have you had to make? Well, we've had to make quite a bit of adjustments. Um, we're selling things we never sold before. Maybe it'll something we'll keep doing, I don't know. But business has slowed down, but we're still trucking. People are still wanting cakes. And has this impacted you to the point where you've had to do any kind of drastic you know, measures to keep the doors open? We've cut our hours, unfortunately, but at least the days are still there. And uh, we have cut, we haven't cut staffing, we've just reduced hours, yeah. But we've, we're making casseroles, we're doing um, some D, DIY kits for people to do at home for Easter, birthdays, just because. I think that'll be a lot of fun. So it's made us very creative in a very short amount of time. And who doesn't love cakes? You know, and it's a good time to do it yourself also. Exactly. You know, so the question is, for the kids. <laughs> Sarah, is today going to be a good day to, to stay indoors and really bake those cakes? I'm going to try to make the, the rabbit cake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's actually really, really? fun. <laughs> Probably not. Hey, listen. I'm more of a cookie a... dough with a spoon kind of oh, guy. Okay. Yeah. We have a tradition in my family where we make a bunny rabbit cake with nice. cookie Aww. frosting. And Feel free to bring in leftovers. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, you can stay inside today, uh, but it won't be that bad outside. It'll just be cloudy uh, and we will have some peaks of sunshine, but mainly a gray day outside right now with live cam. It is cloudy out there. You can take a look at temperatures currently at 61 degrees in Holota, 64 at the airport. It's 64 up in Canyon Lake, 62 in Comfort, 61 in Kerrville, 59 in Lost Maples. Again, cloudy is the key outside today with maybe one or two pop up showers. We're only going to go 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm during the day today, uh, but take a look at temperatures out toward Del Rio starting the day close to 70 degrees in Del Del Rio and in Catula. One thing you'll notice is that it will be breezy. Winds will be from the southeast today at about 15 miles per hour. You can see that those winds have already started to pick up in Rock Springs and Del Rio. That's going to tap into that Gulf of Mexico moisture. And moisture is one of the ingredients for weather, for rain rather, and one of the ingredients for strong storms as well is moisture. And we will have ample moisture in the atmosphere late tonight when we'll have a cool front move through that'll fire off some storms. But for the day today, it'll mainly just just be muggy with a few peaks of afternoon sunshine. Again, we'll carry a small chance, 20% for an isolated storm or two, uh, but really it's going to be cloudy. Uh, 80 degrees for the high temperature, so on the warmer side, southeast winds at 10 to 15, so a little breezy as well. But again, the forecast is going to be focused on late tonight in the overnight hours when many of us are asleep. I want to show you the future cast. This starts tonight at 10 o'clock. 
Notice how around midnight we'll start to see a broken line of storms develop out near Del Rio. It's going to be right along that front. The key word here, broken line of storms. The vast majority of people will not see storms, but those of us that do will see the potential for some strong to severe weather. You can see that that broken line will head off to the east in the overnight hours after midnight. We'll be watching the leading edge of that line for those gusty winds potentially up to 60 miles per hour and we'll be watching inside of that line for the potential for quarter sized hail or greater. That line will be broken, but it will make it towards San Antonio by about three to six o'clock in the morning. That's the key time frame for us to see those broken uh, storms moving into place. I'm only going to go about 40% coverage but the chance will be there for those storms to be strong or severe. I wouldn't be surprised if we get maybe one or two severe thunderstorm warnings around the KSAT 12 viewing area in the overnight hours late tonight. Now the good news is all that is going to happen pre dawn tomorrow for Easter. Easter Sunday itself is actually going to be completely sunny and boy will it be windy too. Right before sunrise, we'll see that front move through. That'll really switch our winds around to the west. A western wind means dry air for us and it will be nice and dry tomorrow for Easter Sunday. But again, in the overnight hours, here are the potential storm threats. Mainly concerned about hail and wind with that broken line of storms, quarter size hail 60 mile per hour wind gusts. There is also a slight possibility for a quick spin up, a quick tornado. But again, that's on the lower end of the spectrum and flooding. We're not necessarily concerned about because again, this line is going to be broken and it's going to be fast moving. The key here is Easter Sunday is going to be beautiful. It'll be clearing in the morning. It'll be windy and sunny. We'll be seeing temperatures climbing up into the um, mid 80s tomorrow for the high temperature. West wind at 15 to 25 miles per hour gusts up to 35 miles per hour. Then after Easter Sunday, we're going to see another front move through. This one's going to be stronger. And if you're somebody who likes to take a walk in the morning hours or go for a run in the morning hours, Hours. It is going to be beautiful in the week ahead in the morning. Temperatures will be on the chilly side in the 40s for morning lows and we'll be able to see afternoon highs in the 60s early next week with tons of sunshine. So whereas this last week was gray, this upcoming week going to be sunny, going to be comfortable with highs in the 60s. We'll keep you up to date on that potential for severe storms late tonight. Max, Stephanie. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much, Sarah. 647, 64 degrees out. <laughs> And up next, find out what if you're eating and drinking, if it's safe, and the steps you can take to stay safe in the future. And taking a look inside the kitchen. Ooh, that looks so good. Boom. Breakfast of champions. There we go. And here are your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, three, four, fireball one, daily four, two, one, three, five, fireball one. And cash 5, 10, 11, 13, 18, 32. In the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, you may be reassessing your relationship with dining out. Well, this morning we're talking about what restaurants are doing to keep you safe. I'm definitely more cautious about eating out. I'm not going to stay inside and just eat groceries. I feel like if I get it, it'll just suck for a couple weeks and I'll be fine. The National Restaurant Association is telling restaurant owners to pay particular attention to wiping down door handles, menus, utensils, and salt shakers. Experts say the coronavirus can remain on cardboard for up to 24 hours and two to three days on plastic and stainless steel. It can also attach itself to aerosols in the air for up to three hours. I notice people are taking extra precautions to clean things, spray the tables down. So I'd like to think that businesses, if they're going to continue you to stay open or being well prepared? Maybe so, but if you want to take extra precautions, bring your own antimicrobial wipes. 
Lysol, Purell, and Clorox are some of the brand name cleaners the EPA recommends. One big question, can the virus be transmitted through infected food? Some researchers say although they can't rule it out, the virus would likely be killed by cooking the food. If you're wondering if it's safe to drink the tap water, experts say these types of viruses are very susceptible to being treated with chlorine and water treatment plant chlorinate to a level that addresses pathogens like coronavirus. And whether you're eating in or out, always remember to wash your hands before and after. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And speaking of food, Meet Tierra doing their best to help people stay on, stay in a good mood after the big party was postponed because of coronavirus. That's right. With Fiesta postponed to November 5th through 15th, La Familia Cortez restaurants offering meals at a time when the city would normally be preparing for the 11-day citywide party. All right. So here's a go here it goes. Two options priced mm -hmm. at $70 and $75. They include fajita fixings, rice, beans, guacamole, pico de gallo, tortillas, and chips. Also, cascarones, loteria, and access to a Fiesta playlist. Sounds like a good time for that. Margaritas can also be added on for an upcharge. Orders for Fiesta kits must be placed online 24 hours in advance and can be picked up at Market Square. And while on the topic of Fiesta, although it has been delayed until November, you can still send us pictures of your colorful wreaths everybody can use a little fiesta as we push through the pandemic together so you can upload your pics on kset.com it might be featured in our kset newscast you know what you can have your own little fiesta mm -hmm. with your family inside your house <laughs> you, <laughs> you can socially like, distant fiesta it sounds like you're giving an order with your family well, in your house <laughs> i mean i don't know if you would be like well he said to have a fiesta in your house nice in okay. your household, yes, with the people close to you yes. that you wouldn't, that you would see otherwise. Anyway, 654, 64 degrees out. And still ahead, a preview of what's coming up on Good Morning America. And taking a look at the roadways right now, 37 and Jones. What else we got? 281 and 410. Roadways are quiet. Still waiting for that sun to come up. If anything does pop up, we will keep you posted. Have a great morning. We'll be right back. Hey, good morning. Coming up on GMA, glimmers of hope in New York as new numbers give support to the idea that we are, in fact, flattening the curve. But the country not in the clear as other regions prepare to see a surge. Now the big debate, when and how can we reopen? Plus, Google and Apple teaming up the giant tech rivals, joining forces to help track coronavirus cases, the technology that can alert you if you have come in contact with somebody who has COVID. And finally, Easter on lockdown from the Vatican to the U.S., how the faithful plan to celebrate in this pandemic and the controversy in some areas as pastors plan to defy social distancing guidelines and hold services. It is all coming up on GMA. We'll see you very soon. And back here at home, 11 more BCSO deputies from the recently graduated detention cadet class have tested positive for the coronavirus. Those 11 cases are a part of why we are seeing a spike here in Bear County. This morning, we sit at 665 confirmed cases. As you can see on your screen, that is up 50 more confirmed cases than Thursday evening. The total death toll related to COVID-19 in our county now stands at 24. And San Antonio police are looking for the people responsible for causing a gas leak. Now, it happened around 1030 last night in the 800 block of Chipping Drive. Police say that people in two different cars were shooting at each other when one of the bullets hit a gas line from a vacant home. And when police got to the scene, they began to evacuate people from their homes after they smelled that gas. Now, people were allowed to go back to their homes hours later. No injuries were reported. A look at your Easter weekend forecast. Know that today we will see peaks of sunshine, but it'll be a mainly gray day near 80 degrees with an isolated shower or storm. Now tomorrow for Easter is going to be really nice. We'll actually be quickly clearing and see windy conditions with winds from the west at 15 to 25, warming up to 84. But tonight there is the potential in the overnight hours to see some strong to severe storms. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. Uh, meteorologist Katie Blake will be back in the evening hours to give you 
the latest update as this is an evolving forecast. Just know that a front also will move through on Sunday night into Monday morning. That'll set up a very nice week next week. How nice? We'll have mornings in the 40s, sunshine and temperatures in the 60s for the afternoons. Guys, that is an improvement in the muggy, gross forecast <laughs> we saw last week. That's I do just true. want to caution everybody, pay attention to the weather tonight. Awesome. Good idea. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for watching. We'll see you back here in an hour. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The latest confirmed cases of coronavirus, the numbers here in Bear County, Texas, and the country, and new data that shows minorities may be disproportionately affected. And Bear County deputies looking for some people involved in an overnight shooting that caused a gas leak. Some people had to evacuate their homes. We'll have the details just ahead. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, it could be a muggy one out there today with possibilities of storms tonight. We're going to check in with our Sarah Spivey for your full forecast. Good morning, 8 o'clock this Saturday, April 11th. Thanks for joining us this morning and happy Easter weekend. Happy Easter weekend. Do you have a good, good Friday? We had a good, good Friday. What about you? <laughs> good, good Friday. I actually made it outside in the afternoon. The sun came out. Yeah. Tried to get some uh, vitamin D going. Good, good. My, uh, my perpetual attempt at getting tan. 28 <laughs> years good. in the making. <laughs> Max, you're tanner than me, my friend. Uh, well, we are going to be mainly cloudy today. A few peaks of sunshine will be possible, but tonight our focus is going to be on the potential for some thunderstorms after midnight uh, ahead of a dry line, making for a beautiful Easter Sunday. We just have to get through the potential for some storms late in the overnight hours. Right now outside, though, gray is the story of the day. It's 64 degrees. Humidity is at 84%. We've got an east wind at about 10 miles per hour. That's keeping dense fog from developing around San Antonio, which is good news, but it is still pretty cloudy. 61 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 62 in Comfort, 61 in Kerrville, 62 in Bandera, 64 in Divine. And today you'll be able to take the dog for a walk because although it's going to be cloudy for most of the day, there's only a 20% chance for an isolated shower or two. We'll see a few peaks of sun in the afternoon. That'll allow us to warm up to near 80 degrees, and it'll be mostly cloudy after the sun sets. But as we head into the overnight hours, we'll have the potential for some storms. Here's a look at your Easter weekend. Again, only isolated rain today with peaks of sun. Then tomorrow's going to be beautiful, quickly clearing. It will be windy, however, with winds from the west at about 15 to 25 miles per hour. We're watching tonight, though, for the potential for some severe weather as we head into very early Easter Sunday. I'll be back to detail that threat for strong to severe storms. Again, only a 40% chance in San Antonio, but elsewhere we have a better chance for some storms around the KSAT 12 viewing area. Max. Thank you, Sarah. The number of COVID-19 cases confirmed here in Bear County is now up to 665 cases, 50 more than earlier this week. Here's a look at how those numbers break down. 243 of the cases contracted through close contact with someone already infected, 210 through community transmission, 151 are travel related. And as of this morning, 24 deaths reported related to COVID-19. 89 people are hospitalized right now, 56 of them in the ICU, and 44 are on ventilators. And included in those numbers we just mentioned are a VIA bus driver and a SAWS employee. Five HEB employees and five San Antonio police officers have also tested positive, and now 16 Bear County Sheriff's employees. 11 of the cases are from a class of detention cadets who had graduated recently. They had all been placed on leave after the first member of the class tested positive. The Sheriff's Office does not believe any additional detention officers were affected. Meanwhile, the Sheriff's Office is dealing with an inmate who tested positive at the jail. It's the first inmate to test positive for COVID-19 at the jail and is currently in isolation. And we're also hearing concerns at call centers here in San Antonio. Our case at web team learning two separate call centers had positive cases of COVID-19. A spokesperson for Coles confirming that the West Side call center on Rogers Run had at least one case, but they didn't specify on the total number. In a statement, Coles says that there was a deep cleaning of the work area and all common spaces and they added extra measures. The facility still open. Now the other company, Wells Fargo, also confirming that two employees 
at their contact center on Wiseman Boulevard tested positive for COVID-19. Wells Fargo says they also conducted a deep cleaning and asked employees who were close to those two employees who tested positive not to return into the office. The city has stated that call centers may operate but should practice social distancing. And as the pandemic forces restaurants and other small businesses to close, governments, nonprofits at the federal, state, and local level, they're all pitching in, helping out as revenue is being cut short. In addition to the federal relief, there are several state and local programs available, so let's break it down. At the local level, the West Side Development Corporation Board of Directors allocated up to $50,000 total in loans on March 27th to small businesses on the West Side suffering from the economic impact of COVID-19. And at the federal level, business owners and nonprofits that have less than 500 employees they, and they're going through a financial hardship, you can apply for the Small Business Administration's disaster loans directly through the administration. And at the state level, the Texas Restaurant Association Education Foundation has established Texas Restaurant Relief Fund to keep independent restaurants open and workers employed. And also the state's Product Development and Small Business Incubator Fund provides asset-backed financing to companies doing business through Texas through loans with competitive lending rates. Now. We know this can be a lot of overwhelming information, so if you have any questions on how to apply and go through this whole process, we have a rundown of how to do so right now, ksat.com. Now, several states focusing on minority communities because in a lot of situations, they're being hit the hardest. Louisiana's governor has formed a health equality task force, and New York is opening a handful of new testing sites to study and address the problem. ABC's Zachary Keish is at a new facility in Brooklyn with a look at this growing concern. With cases in New York topping every country around the globe, new testing sites are now opening up across the city this morning. The new sites are focusing on minority communities after state released data reveals they are some of the most impacted by the virus. It's alarming, but it's not surprising that people of color have a greater burden of chronic health conditions. The statistics are alarming. In Michigan, 40% of deaths are in the black community, even though they only make up 14% of the population. In Chicago, 72% of deaths have been among black residents who make up less than 30% of the population. Louisiana is seeing similar numbers. And here in New York, minorities have been hit hard. Approximately 34% of deaths are in the Latino community and roughly 28% are African Americans. There's no doubt uh, systemic racism in our society still and there's systemic structural inequality in our health care system. Statistically, these communities have a higher rate of underlying health conditions. Diseases like diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and asthma are disproportionately afflicting the minority populations, particularly the African Americans. Which contribute to the horrifying death rates brought on by the virus. The Surgeon General Jerome Adams delivering this personal message. I've been carrying around an inhaler in my pocket for 40 years out of fear of having a fatal asthma attack. And I hope that showing you this inhaler shows little kids with asthma all across the country that they can grow up to be Surgeon General one day. Those pre-existing conditions, as talked about, the asthma, the hypertension, the high blood pressure, those things in combination with lack of testing has been extremely problematic. Zachary Keish, ABC News, New York. And here locally, Bear County deputies are looking for the people responsible for causing a gas leak on the city's northeast side. Now, it happened around 1030 last night in the hindered block of Chipping Drive. According to Bear County deputies, there were two groups of people shooting at each other from inside their vehicles when one of the bullets hit a gas line. Now, CPS crews were called to the scene and the area was evacuated. People were allowed to go back to their homes about hours later. No injuries were reported. Time now, 808, 64 degrees out. And just ahead on GMSA, our David Elder gives us a sneak peek of what you can expect from the next episode of Texas Eats. That's coming right up. Love Saturdays. Not only do I get to hang out with my friends here at work, but also we have Texas Eats. I know, that's pretty cool. Speaking of friends, everyone's friends with Aww. Tim Duncan, Spurs legend, taking Instagram reminding San Antonians about the importance of social distancing next on GMSA the message that he is trying to convey, and we're gonna take a closer look at that face mask he's rocking. Yeah, I think that's from his car shop. Well, stick around to find out. Taking a look outside with live cam. Hey, that looks uh, yeah, a little more dreary than it did 
an hour ago. <laughs> We're going to check in with Sarah in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. Celebrities around the world using social media to raise awareness about social distancing. And among those celebrities, Spurs legend Tim Duncan taking Instagram, trying to get that word out about using face masks. So let's take a look. There he is, Spurs legend, posting a message urging San Antonians and his fans to wear face coverings, limiting the spread of COVID-19. In the Instagram post, he says, quote, everyone, please make sure to wear a mask of some kind of cotton facial production as we all can make a difference in this fight against COVID-19, end quote. Now, the post featured a picture of Duncan wearing a custom-made blackjack face mask. The rise of positive cases have prompted Duncan and other great Spurs like Manu Ginobili get the word out on social media about social distancing here in San Antonio. And also on Instagram, an actor gave a shout out to San Antonio. So actor Ryan Reynolds posted a video on his Instagram story celebrating the San Antonio Food Bank and its mega donation event that happened on Thursday. So Reynolds writes in the video, quote, the way people are stepping up matters, end quote. The San Antonio Food Bank mega event was able to serve 10,000 households Thursday alone, and the food bank will be holding more events this coming week. So I want to thank everybody who donated to help in this event and the volunteers who helped you know, distribute that, and uh, hopefully more people will donate. Absolutely. Well. All right. Let's uh, throw it on over to Sarah. There she is. Hey, guys. How Hi, are Sarah. You this morning. Long time. Yeah, Long I time. know. So far. <laughs> uh, but we are going to be seeing clouds really be stubborn today, but a few peaks of sunshine will uh, be around in the afternoon. The main weather focus over the next 48 hours or so is the potential for some stronger storms tonight uh, for some of us. It is springtime, and so just about any time we have possibility of storms sometimes that may result in some strong storms here and there but right now it's mainly cloudy uh, 64 degrees we've got an east wind at about east southeast wind at about 10 miles per hour that's helping to prevent fog dense fog from develop developing there are some areas where we are looking at some haze on the horizon but not really having to deal with fog that would be dangerous early this morning 62 up in comfort 61 at bernie stage airfield 64 in canyon lake 65 in new Braunfels. a mild morning with all of us in the mid 60s and on the satellite we're seeing complete cloud cover again this is going to be stubborn cloud cover in fact you may run into a few sprinkles early this morning and really only one or two pop up showers or storms are possible today. The chance for rain today during the day only going to be 20%. Winds are starting to pick up up in the hill country from the southeast. Take a look at Rock Springs and Del Rio sustained wind right around 15 miles per hour. Later on today we'll have a sustained wind at about 10 to 15 miles per hour in San Antonio. That's going to tap into that Gulf of Mexico moisture and increase humidity throughout the day. Humidity, low level moisture, one of the ingredients for some rain and I'll take you through the high res future cast and what you'll notice is that today really again only one or two isolated showers possible most of us will remain dry during the day just cloudy and then through the afternoon you can see that a few peaks of sunshine will be possible that will be just enough to warm us up uh, to near 80 degrees this afternoon uh, 80 for the high temperature again only a 20 percent chance for rain uh, southeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour pretty uneventful today but late tonight after midnight, we'll start to see some storms on the radar. I want to take you through the future cast again and show you late tonight. This is midnight, and you can see that there's likely going to be a broken line of storms that will develop around midnight out toward Del Rio. Now, as this system moves to the east, the keywords here are going to be broken line of storms. Not everybody will see storms, but as these storms move to the east, they do have the potential to strengthen and possibly become severe with the risk for quarter sized hail or 60 mile per hour wind gusts right along the leading edge of whatever broken line develops. The best time frame in San Antonio to see storms is going to be between about 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. early Sunday. But Easter Sunday is going to be great because this system is going to clear out before the sun rises and we'll actually be left with a windy and sunny Easter Sunday. But as you can see, the Storm Prediction Center has put areas 
around San Antonio under a risk for severe weather. Generally, the highest risk is going to be north of Highway 90, where there's an enhanced risk or a three on a scale of one to five for the potential for severe weather. Again, the chance for storms only at 40%. So that really does show you that it's going to be a broken line late tonight and into early tomorrow. But again, Easter Sunday is going to be great. Clearing skies, sunny and windy near 84 in the afternoon. A west wind at 15 to 25 miles per hour, gusting up to 35. High fire danger is going to be out there tomorrow for Easter Sunday, but a beautiful Easter Sunday. Then we're going to see temperatures really cool down after a front arrives early on Monday. We're going to be looking at highs only in the 60s, but plenty of sunshine, a beautiful weather week ahead. We just have to get through the potential for storms tonight. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. We will watch out for that. All right. Thank you, Sarah. 817, 64 degrees out. And today, perfect excuse, not like you need one, to give your pets <laughs> more treats and more love. Just to head on GMSA, it's National Pet Day. What's your pet's name? Gordo. Why's that? Because he's Gordo. <laughs> <laughs> a give him the extra pet. The extra <laughs> a little treat. hefty. <laughs> a little hefty. And speaking of extra food, a lot of restaurants being affected by the pandemic, but our David Elder talking to owners of Groomer Seafood about how they're being affected and what they plan to do next. We have a sneak peek. That's next. Good morning and welcome back. 821 this Saturday morning. It is Saturday and that means we have Texas Eats today at 10 a.m. And obviously it is hosted by our resident foodie and fan favorite, David Elder. That's right. Thank you, David. In this clip, David Elder is talking with Richard Groomer from Groomer Seafood about how the current crisis has affected their business. Food with me right here is Richard Groomer, the man, the myth, president, CEO of Groomer Seafood. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. And, you know, talk to me about what you guys are doing in here to adjust to the current changes happening right now. I know a lot of stuff is different. Right. How are you guys adapting to that? Well, we're right in the middle of Lent right now, which is kind of, this coronavirus has kind of caught us by surprise. Uh, we're having to change a lot of things. About two thirds of the business we uh, do right now is curbside or home delivery, which was totally unexpected two months ago, but here we are. And uh, it's really gone well. It's, uh, it's a learning curve that we've kind of had to, to practice with a little bit, but we figured it out. We're doing well with it. Technically, we've become a grocery store and hard to locate items. Since one of our largest customers was Cisco Foods, we already had an inroad to uh, uh, some of the, uh, uh, the wholesale products that they sell on a, on a large scale. So we start bringing a lot of products such as uh, produce and eggs and milk and tortillas and just about everything else you can see, and we're selling it all now. Gotta love David Elder. I know. Thank you, David. Fun fact, he's pretty good at basketball. Uh, yes, it I helps. heard. He's tall. I heard. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about food, you can now bake the famous double tree chocolate chip cookies for yourself. And, you know, if you want to share. And you can do it at home. Yeah, that's cool. Since their hotels are closed, the Hilton chain wanted to offer Americans sheltering in place a little comfort by giving away their chocolate chip cookie recipe. They're very good. Now, copycat recipes have been shared online for years. But this Easter weekend, in the spirit of hospitality, Hilton has released the official version. Ooh, Doubletree cookies have quite the long history and a passionate fan following. I had no idea. The Doubletree chocolate chip cookie even became, get this, the first food to be baked aboard the International Space Station. Whoa! That I didn't know. You could find the recipe on Doubletree's website or their social media channels. Very cool. So what do you think? Are you going to do it? Do you have family in town? Uh, maybe. Okay. <laughs> well, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be in and out. Yeah. You could make the chocolate chip cookies in the shape of Easter bunnies. That would be great. There you we, go. we need ingredients though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do that. 824, 64 degrees out. And it doesn't matter if it's a golden, a Labrador or a stray. We all love our pets. What about a Labradoodle? Uh, or that. Yeah, those are those are really good for people with allergies. <laughs> Take some time to snuggle with them all and give them some extra time today. We'll be right back. Well, there's always a reason to celebrate today. A reason to celebrate your pets. Aww. It is National Pet Day. And I know what you're thinking. Every day is National Pet Day at my house, right? <laughs> but National Pet Day is actually about helping animals who may not have a loving home like yours. So today, again, perfect day to donate supplies to a rescue and during this pandemic, which as many pets going back to local shelters. So celebrate that bond and do your part to make sure that other companions, animals are living their best lives. I think um, some, a lot of people are, are 
uh, I was going to say adopting pets mm. at this time. Yeah. Our, our producer Jared and Steve mm. Spreester, you know, a good time to do that as well. Absolutely. Time now, 828, 64 degrees out. And if you are a consumer of healthy choice meals, you might want to be aware of a recall. Details on GMSA. And we have a Selena special airing tomorrow, right here on KSAT 12. Ahead on GMSA, we have an insight interview with Selena's husband who talks about the singer and her legacy. Good morning and welcome back. 8.30 this Saturday, April 11th. Thanks for joining us this morning. A little overcast today. That's mm -hmm. what we'll expect, but we saw some sun yesterday, or you did, right? Saw some sun yesterday. <laughs> Sarah gave me the preview before the show. Muggy today? That's what we're expecting? Yeah, muggy today, and it will be difficult for us to see abundant sunshine today. We will see a few peaks of sun, uh, but mainly it's going to be a cloudy day. The biggest thing to keep track of uh, in the weather is the potential for some strong storms late tonight across the KSAT 12 viewing area. But for now, here's a look outside. It's those gray skies that we've been used to for the last week. Honestly, it's been a pretty gray week. 64 degrees outside. We've got an east southeast wind at about 10 miles per hour, preventing us from seeing dense fog. We aren't seeing dense fog out there, which is good, but just some areas of haze. Generally, all of us in the low to mid 60s at the moment, 62 in Kerrville and in Bandera, 61 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 63 in Canyon Lake, 65 in New Braunfels, 65 at Port SA, 64 in Hondo and 65 in Floresville. Now today, Again, we're going to hang on to those stubborn clouds. We may see a few peaks of sun in the afternoon. We'll still be able to warm up to near 80 degrees. Southeast wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. You'll notice there's a small chance 20% for an isolated shower or storm. But late tonight, after midnight, we'll see a broken line of storms develop in the hill country and out toward Del Rio. And then that'll track to the east through about 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. And that will have the potential to produce some severe weather. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has put us in San Antonio, out toward Austin, San Angelo, even up toward uh, Wichita Falls under an enhanced risk for severe weather. That's a three on a scale of one to five. The chance for storms, however, is 40%. So what that means is that there will be some storms out there tonight scattered in nature. And if those storms develop and become stronger, they could become severe with the potential for hail and gusty winds. I'll be back in just a bit to detail this even further for you and take a look toward Easter. The good news is Easter looks pretty great. Stephanie. Sounds good, Sarah. Thank you. San Antonio City officials have confirmed that two more residents from the Southeast Nursing and Rehabilitation Center who tested positive for COVID-19 have died. Now, a total of 12 nursing home residents have died of COVID-19 complications, not counting for half of the deaths in Bear County. Now, eight days after city officials announced an outbreak at a Southeast side nursing home, nursing home officials said they were, quote, saddened, devastated, and somewhat confounded, end quote, about the, how the outbreak occurred. Now, city, city officials have announced a plan to potentially house COVID-19 patients from nursing homes in the region at two long-term care facilities in an effort to try to mitigate the spread of the virus. Statewide, Texas now reporting more than 11,600 confirmed cases and 226 deaths. Numbers across the state are still rising, and Governor Greg Abbott signaling at his press conference just yesterday that he is already thinking of strategically reopening the state. Next week, I will be providing uh, an executive order talking about what will be done in Texas about reopening Texas businesses also in a way that will be safe for that economic revitalization. We will focus on protecting lives while restoring livelihoods. Protecting lives while restoring livelihoods. Governor Greg Abbott saying that he would provide specifics of his plan next week. He didn't give many more details, but he did say that his plan includes testing and getting people back to work. And across the country, the cases of coronavirus rising. Let's take a look at those numbers. There are now nearly 500,000 cases being reported in the U.S. and more than 18,000 deaths. That includes at least 2,074 more deaths that John Hopkins University reported on Friday. The global death toll surpassed 100,000. There are nearly 1.7 million cases around the world. And back here at home, county parks and city parks closed for Easter weekend. City parks were officially shut down at midnight. 
Now, these areas will be off limits for the entire weekend. That means that the tradition of camping not going to happen this year. Now, it's all in an effort to keep the virus from spreading. Trails will be open, but only for walking, biking or running. The city parks are set to reopen on Monday morning at 5 a.m. County parks Monday morning, 9 a.m. And as Easter Sunday approaches, you may want to be aware of some retailers that will be closed on the holiday. So Trader Joe's, Sprouts, and Lowe's are among the stores that announced they won't be open tomorrow. Now this is in part as a thank you to employees who have been working so hard through the COVID-19 pandemic. You can take a closer look at the full list of places that are closing right now on KSET.com. And the local hotel industry trying to do their part to help those affected by the pandemic. The city is using designated hotel space to help with COVID-19 patients who are having trouble self-isolating from families in their house. Now, if you are one of those people who have symptoms and you want to isolate, but you just can't find the space to do so, you can call the number that you see on your screen right now, 210-207-5779. And new coronavirus cases have been reported among the crew of a hospital ship docked in California. The USNS Mercy is currently docked at the port of Los Angeles. And Friday, the Navy reported two crew members are the latest to test positive for COVID-19. Now that means three people on the ship's crew are now being treated for the disease. The Navy says they are being isolated off of the ship. The USNS Mercy is being used to treat patients who do not have the coronavirus. Now the Navy says the ship is taking precautions to ensure the safety of the other crew members and patients on board. And if you need help and you're going through some economic hardship, the IRS is getting going and they say that the stimulus checks will start going out next week. Now, this first round of distributions, part of the $2.2 trillion economic relief package, and it's going to be made to people who have approved direct deposit and who have filed tax returns for 2018 or 2019. People who have not filed their tax returns don't have authorized direct deposits or receive Social Security may have to wait weeks or even months to get their stimulus check. The IRS also planning to launch a web portal next week. People can register their bank info online and might even be able to get your money faster. And today, South Korea announcing plans to strap tracking wristbands on people who defy quarantine orders. South Korean officials said stricter controls are required because some of the 15, 7,000 people who are under orders to stay home have slipped out by leaving behind smartphones with tracking apps. So plans for broader use of wristbands were scaled back after there were objections by human rights and legal activists. Rain or snow, the mail must go through, but will the U.S. Postal Service survive this pandemic? Well, the Postal Service says it will run out of money by September if Congress doesn't step in and help out. Postmaster General spoke with lawmakers Thursday and asked for $75 billion to keep the U.S. Postal Service afloat. She says that the service will likely see a $13 billion revenue hit this year. The Postal Service isn't getting money from Congress's $2.2 trillion relief package. And the San Antonio Fire Department calling a building a complete loss after it caught fire late last night. Now, it happened around 1130 last night in the Kinton Village Apartments. That's located in the 14,000 block of Nacogdoches Road on the northeast side. Firefighters say when they arrived to the scene, they found a building with four units up in flames. Now, the fire spread quickly throughout that building. Later, the flames began to shoot through the roof and caused the chimney to collapse. Now, according to the firefighters, a total of five people in three units were displaced, but no other injuries were reported. Time now, 839, 64 degrees up. And just ahead on GMSA, a member of Selena y Los Dinos and husband of the Queen of Tejano speaks with our Jesse Degollado about the singer and the life after her death. And next on GMSA, why a popular low-calorie brand is recalling their chicken bowls and what you need to be aware of. And taking a look outside with Ooh. my cam. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice and, you know. Mean and muggy. <laughs> nice and muggy outside. It is 64 degrees. We're going to check in with Sarah to see what you can expect for the rest of your day. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. A popular low-calorie brand is recalling more than 65 tons of frozen chicken product. Uh, the USDA announcing that ConAgra Brands is recalling nearly 131,000 pounds of Healthy Choice frozen chicken bowls. Uh, the product, specifically labeled Healthy Choice Power Bowls, chicken feta and farro. Now, the company says they've received customer complaints about small rocks being in the product. 
The USDA says that the chicken bowls were produced on January 23rd of this year. They have a best buy date of October 19th. And talking about food, with the stay home work safe orders, Easter Sunday will be unlike any other in San Antonio with dining rooms closed. But some restaurants around the city will try to bring a sense of normalcy by selling family style meals to go starting today all the way through Easter Sunday. Now some of those places are Carabas, Italian Grill, Denny's and La Gloria. So for a full list of those places and the specific locations, make sure to visit our website at ksat.com under the food category. Do you guys have any good plans for Easter weekend? We haven't we haven't made the plans yet. I mean, of, of course, we will we will still celebrate social at, distancing at home. Yes, at home, but uh, we haven't decided where to, you know, where we should pick up food. What about you guys? Mm. Virtual, virtual, virtual holidays. What about you, yes. Sarah? Well, food, we'll probably make some steak that we bought. Or Ooh, that's a good idea. But, um, Big win. Michael and I actually recorded some Easter music. Aww. So I'm going to release some of that on my Facebook page nice. for people to celebrate. Very nice. Us. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. But for now, let's go ahead and talk about the weather. We are cloudy outside right now. We have got a haze on the horizon, but fog is not an issue because uh, we are really seeing wind sustained from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour around San Antonio up to 15 miles per hour out in the hill country. It's 64 degrees at the airport right now, 63 in Bulverde, 62 in Comfort, 62 in Kerrville, 60 in Lost Maples, and 65 in Pleasanton. These clouds are kind of acting like a blanket and have kept the temperature fairly steady since mid uh, And today, these clouds are really going to be stubborn. We may see a few peaks of sunshine, but that's probably going to be about it. 70 degrees right now in Del Rio or near 70 degrees in Del Rio. 68 in Catula. It's a little bit warmer out uh, toward the Sierra Madres. Again, here's those winds. You can see that the wind is from the east southeast at about 10 miles per hour in San Antonio. But look out toward Rock Springs Del Rio. Southeast wind sustained at 15. Today's going to be a touch breezy. You'll definitely notice the breeze from the southeast. That's going to tap into that Gulf of Mexico moisture, bringing it into the KSAT 12 viewing area. And that low level moisture, one of the ingredients for rainfall. Uh, now today, during the day, we won't see much. In fact, we'll only have a 20% chance for a pop-up shower or storm. Really, the thing that I'm going to be hoping for is a little bit of sun in the afternoon. Few peaks of sun. That'll allow our high temperature to raise to about 80 degrees. So on the mild side, southeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. But later on tonight, uh, we're going to be paying attention to the potential for a few storms to develop. This is the future cast. This is showing tonight at 10 p.m. Not much going on. But then right around midnight, what we'll notice out near Del Rio is a broken line of storms storms developing ahead of a dry line and that broken line of storms. That's the key word. They're broken. Not everybody is going to be seeing storms tonight, but some storms will be out there as these storms move east in the overnight hours. They have the potential to strengthen or become severe. We'll be watching any leading edge of storms for the potential for 60 mile per hour wind gusts and within those storms, if they are really strong, they could end up producing about quarter sized hail. Again, we'll keep an eye on that. The best Best window of opportunity for those storms in San Antonio will be between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Again, a broken line of storms. A lot of people not seeing storms and even more people not going to be seeing severe weather, but a couple of severe weather warnings, especially west of San Antonio, will be possible. Again, this is tomorrow at 5 a.m. before the sun rises. Then very quickly, we are going to see things clear out for us, and it's actually going to be beautiful, albeit a little windy on Easter Sunday. We will see tons of sunshine because right before the sun rises, those skies will be clearing, and it'll be a nice day on Sunday. But tonight, those storm threats with any of those storms that develop will mainly be hail and wind, quarter-sized hail, 60-mile-per-hour wind gusts. We cannot rule out a tornado, but I want to stress the bigger concerns are wind and hail, okay? And we'll keep an eye on that for you. Flooding is going to be a low risk, but like I said, Easter Sunday is going to be beautiful. We'll be clearing out. We'll actually see a high temperature right around 84 tomorrow, so a little bit warmer than 80 degrees. West winds will be the really noticeable thing, 15 to 25 miles per hour, gusting up to 35 miles per hour. And again, our eyes will be on the potential for storms late tonight into early tomorrow morning. Only 40% chance, but the chance is there. Then as we head into the week, this is a look at early morning temperatures. If you're somebody, Stephanie Serna, who likes to go for a run in the morning hours, 
This week is going to be beautiful for early morning walks and runs. A little on the chilly side with temperatures in the 40s right at around sunrise. But then take a look at these afternoon temperatures. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all in the 60s for highs. A lot of sunshine. This past week was gray. It was muggy. We had areas of rain sometimes, so it was difficult to get outside. This week ahead is going to be absolutely beautiful. Again, we'll keep you up to date on the potential for some storms tonight. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. I'm looking forward to that running weather. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> 849, 64 degrees out. And we have a Selena special airing right here on Case at 12. That's happening tomorrow. And as a preview, our Jesse Dogoyato speaks to Selena's husband, Chris Bettis, about the singer's legacy. That's coming up next on GMSA. Not only was Chris Bettis grief stricken, having lost a woman who'd been the love of his life. I thought I was done. If you think about it, when when Selena passed away, that was it. Both personally and professionally. After all, he says. Well, yeah, she was super talented and an amazing person, but she was my wife. And I had to deal with the loss of that. I hadn't learned how to handle both, right? I wanted to be private about it, but yet I wanted the world to know how great she was. Her authenticity and amazing zest for life, he says, helped make Selena the cultural icon she is now. I think it came across and people feel that energy from her even now. A successful artist in his own right, 25 years later, Bettis pursued a much different path musically. Even so. In a big way, I'm thankful and grateful for the role that Selena has played in that. Now, Betty says he relishes his role, meeting generations of Selena's still very devoted fans. How can you not, when you're feeling that somebody cares so much about somebody that you cared so much about? It's like you're sharing a special moment in time. Seeing so many who dress up like Selena isn't surprising, he says, but him? And I'm like, wait, okay. It's a twilight zone, right? Further proof, Bettis says that Selena's aura, her style, her music are indeed timeless. Here we are 25 years later and it's bigger than it ever was. So I want to stay on the ride with everybody. And thank you. Jesse Degollado, KSET 12 News. Very excited for that special. Yeah, looking forward to it. So I'm now 854, 64 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. There is always a reason to celebrate and in a hospital in Nevada, they had a big reason. Southern Hills sent home its first critical coronavirus patient this week. Take a look. So this is Alfred and Alfred, they say that he's in his 60s and he had underlying health issues. He contracted the coronavirus and was close to dying. But here's the thing, after three weeks, mostly in the ICU, Alfred was able to leave without any symptoms and with a lot of love and a lot of support from the hospital staff. Well, he's living. That is great news. Great news and great to see Alfred going like this. Yes. Yes. Big fist pump. Yes. All right. 857, 65 degrees out. And making sure your private data stays safe with a new piece of clothing. Hmm. Oh. How one company is keeping you safe <laughs> and warm, maybe. <laughs> Stylish. Stylish. We'll be right back. <laughs> Record-breaking numbers involving the coronavirus. Still ahead, thousands of lives claimed in just one day here in the United States. Plus, people of faith getting creative after places of worship have been closed down for the Easter holiday. Some alternatives that are being done for people who cannot attend those services. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Well, the sun is out, kind of. We're going to check in with our service <laughs> five for what you can expect today and on Easter. Good morning, 9 o'clock this Saturday, April 11th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, the sun is kind of out. It's daytime. It's daytime. <laughs> right, Sarah? What are we expecting today? Okay. Yeah, guys. <laughs> I was told to be I in the weather these, lab. These talks we have. Oh, gotcha. So I'm going to just get... All I'm right. gonna stay socially distant. Yes. There we go. Hey. I'm not in stay the light in the because there's no light this far away, but it's gonna be cloudy for most of the day. Well, okay. there you go, All symbolic right. right there. Yeah, I'll be back to talk about the chance for storms later tonight too. Thank you, Sarah. All right, thank you, Sarah.
And also we begin this morning with the latest number of confirmed COVID-19 cases here in Bear County. 11 more Bear County deputies from the recently graduated detention cadet class have tested positive for the coronavirus. Now their cases are a part of the new spike we see here in Bear County. This morning we sit at 665 confirmed cases. That's up 50 more than Thursday evening. The total death toll related to COVID-19 in our county now at 24. And those cases include a VIA bus driver, a SAWS employee, several HEB employees, five San Antonio police officers, and now we know 16 BCSO employees. 11 of the cases are actually from a class of detention cadets who had recently graduated. Now they had all been placed on leave after the first member of the class tested positive. The sheriff's office does not believe any additional detention officers were affected. Meanwhile, the sheriff's office is dealing with an inmate who has tested positive at the jail. It is actually the first inmate to test positive for COVID-19 at the jail. They are now isolated and the sheriff's office says none of the other inmates housed with the patients have so shown any symptoms, but they're taking all precautions if symptoms arise. And although hundreds of cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed throughout the city, and the county, there's still hope and a road to recovery. So I talked with a doctor at University Hospital who says while it's possible to recover from COVID-19, it is a lengthy process. And I have seen Dr. Holly Day has been treating COVID-19 positive patients at University Hospital, and she says she's seen patients get better and go home, but it's not a quick recovery. Um, the big part of helping someone with COVID get better is what's called supportive care. And that is basically making sure that they're able to keep breathing, they're able to keep eating and drinking and stay hydrated for as long as it takes for their body to fight off the infection. And Dr. Holly Day tells us what makes the recovery process so challenging is that the treatments we have in the U.S. right now are all experimental. Y'all may have heard about Plaquenil or hydroxychloroquine, which was one of the medications that um, China has um, recommended to their providers to use based on their preliminary data. That is one medication we've used and it's a pill and I've seen the patients I gave it to get better. Dr. Day says the patients she's talking about are not in the ICU, but when it comes to COVID-19, some people have ended up in the ICU. Some have recovered after just staying in the hospital for a few days and some can treat themselves at home. Some people have been doing fine at home. Um, some people have felt like they had a cold or a bad flu um, and they felt crummy for a few days um, and then they started getting better. Dr. Day says if you're at home with COVID-19, it's very important to isolate yourself and to monitor your fever and breathing. And if that gets worse, you need to call a doctor. And that was our own Stephanie Cerner reporting right next to me. Thank you. And across the country this morning, a new heartbreaking milestone in the fight against COVID-19. Health officials reporting the most numbers of deaths in a single day. At last check, 18,777 people died from the virus so far. That includes at least 2,074 more deaths that Johns Hopkins University reported yesterday. Now, the number of confirmed cases in the United States also topping 500,000 people and across the world, 1.69 million cases have been confirmed and more than 102,000 deaths reported. And Christians around the world are observing Holy Saturday today with the pandemic keeping many from gathering together for services. And here in the United States, churches are coming up with some unique alternatives for people who can't attend Easter Mass in person. David Wright has the story. It's a cruel irony of coronavirus that at the very moment we most need faith to comfort us, the virus has driven us into isolation. Churches, synagogues, and mosques are empty when they ought to be full. The streets of Jerusalem, holy to all three major religions, are empty because of a worldwide plague. But from virtual Passover seders on Zoom to a solitary broadcast version of the Stations of the Cross at St. Peter's, the faithful are finding a way to worship together. Some communities are pointedly defying social distancing guidelines. In Kansas today, the state Supreme Court will hear arguments to determine whether congregations can gather with more than 10 people. With a shockingly irresponsible decision that will put every Kansas life at risk. But from Manila to Manhattan, the vast majority have found creative ways to get by. 
In Germany, drive-in theaters are making a comeback. Cathedrals of cars. Und die Schwester seiner Mutter. Just stay with him. One preacher printed out photos of all his parishioners to keep him company in the church. I spent one night, you know, in the chapel, basically, uh, you know, masking tape and uh, printing photos, putting them all over the pews. And it was, for me, actually, it was an amazingly prayerful moment to be in a quiet chapel, kind of in the dark. And every time I put a picture up, I could, you know, remember the people who I was praying for and think about them. David Wright, ABC News, New York. Time now, 9.06, 65 degrees out. And a taste of the sea without having to go to the beach. Still ahead, David Elder shows us where you can get some do-it-yourself sushi kits. Mm. Plus, production halted for a popular video game console. Why Nintendo is putting a pause on making more switches. Uh-oh. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam. Uh, kind of muggy today at 65 degrees. We're going to check in with Sarah to see what we can expect tonight. Possibly showers. Good morning and happy Saturday. Well, kids all across the country, probably across the world, they are taking advantage of this isolation, social distancing, diving into video games while under quarantine. Well, Nintendo actually now has to deal with supply problems. Demand for the Nintendo Switch surging in March. Sales of the system were up 240%. The problem is the coronavirus has actually slowed down production in China where parts for the machine are made. And as a result of the slowdown, the House of Mario is pausing all shipments of the Switch and the Switch Lite to its home country of Japan. Existing pre-orders will be filled, but no other new units will be sent to Japanese stores for the time being. Fortunately, Nintendo promises more systems are on their way to the United States. And data privacy continues to be concerned for many people, whether it's a corporation sharing your data or software equipped cameras watching your every move. But for the cameras, there's some new clothing that uh. aims to help you foil the surveillance software. It's not so much about going unseen. It is about distracting and tricking the system. Now, for example, the clothing uses patterns designed to trigger automated license plate readers. They inject, quote, junk data into the systems and quote overloading the surveillance software huh. interesting would you would you rock it i don't know i don't i don't know <laughs> it wouldn't it wouldn't be good for us to wear on camera i think i think it'd be a little distracting no, for, for here down. yeah i think so all right we talked about the nintendo switch yes does rooney have a switch your daughter you, no but what's funny is she's starting to ask for one i'm like oh mm, I'm not better yet. get it now while you can uh well well we'll see what about you sarah <laughs> nintendo switch I don't have one, but a lot of my friends are ending up uh, buying some Nintendo Switches, especially because they like that Animal Crossing game. Mm. It's like a huge trend. Blowing up social media. It right really now. is. Right now outside, it is cloudy, and we are looking at uh, wind from the southeast at about 10 miles per hour. There may be a few sprinkles at the airport, but no real, no real. Uh, uh, anything showing up substantially on the radar at the moment. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and take a quick look at temperatures around the KSAT 12 viewing area. It's definitely on the mild side this morning. Temperatures in the low to mid 60s, 62 in Comfort, 63 in Bulverde, 65 in New Braunfels, 64 at JBSA Randolph, 66 at Simpson, and 63 in Tarpley. We have got a, a really decent uh, cloud deck above us right now that's going to be hard for us to break. We may see a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon afternoon, but that's about it. It is very cloudy outside and winds are starting to shift around to the southeast sustained up in Rock Springs and Del Rio at about 15 miles per hour. So we're going to see a sustained wind from the southeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. That's going to keep humidity relatively high today, and that's going to be one of the ingredients for the potential for some isolated showers today and then late tonight, the potential for some storms. You can see in the high res future cast that one or two pop up showers or storms could be possible. Possible. Really the chance for rain today during the day only 20% and into the afternoon we will see a few peaks of sunshine. Uh, so because of that we'll be able to warm up to near 80 degrees. It'll be a lot sunnier west of San Antonio during the day today, but in San Antonio's forecast stubborn clouds and isolated shower storm only 20% chance there. Southeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. We will see a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon.
But again, that's it. Then our attention is going to turn to the potential for some strong to severe storms late tonight. We'll show you the high res future cast here. Let's go ahead and go to midnight. Midnight, we'll see a broken line of storms developing out toward Del Rio. The keyword there is broken line of storms. Vast majority of people will miss out on thunderstorms late tonight into early tomorrow, but some people will see some storms and some of those storms could be on the stronger side. This is a look at the future cast at 3 a.m. early tomorrow morning and right along that leading line there edge of the storms. We could see wind gusts of up to 60 miles per hour and within those storms potentially hail greater than the size of quarters. Notice that this model is showing that the area where uh, the thunderstorms are more likely is up in the hill country. The best chance for storms around San Antonio is going to be 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. early Sunday morning, and even that line will be broken. So we're only going to go about 40% chance for storms around San Antonio overnight, and then very quickly we're going to clear out for Sunday, and the weather should be very nice on Sunday, although a little bit on the windy side. A severe weather threat is there. As you can see, the Storm Prediction Center has issued an enhanced risk for severe weather in this orange color. That's a three on a scale of one to five, generally for areas north of Highway 90. But this enhanced risk is very large. It covers a large area of Texas uh, from San Angelo to Austin up to Wichita Falls and even into the Panhandle. Uh, and whenever there's a very large area of a risk, sometimes that means that there's some uncertainty with where those storms were developed. So that's why there's only a 40% chance for storms around San Antonio in the overnight hours. Then Easter Sunday is going to be nice. We'll see clearing skies and we'll warm up. We'll be near 84 in the afternoon under sunny skies. It'll be windy. Take a look at these winds tomorrow. West at 15 to 25 miles per hour, gusting up to 35 miles per hour with the dry air in place too. It might be a fire weather danger day, so try not to do any kind of outdoor burning. Then we'll get a front early on Monday morning and that'll allow for our high temperatures to be very pleasant during the week. High temperatures only in the 60s and a lot of sunshine next week too, which is really welcome because this last week was pretty gray. We'll continue to update you on the chance for storms late tonight. Max, Stephanie. Thank you so much, Sarah. All right, thank you, Sarah. 916, 65 degrees out. And we're celebrating our furry friends right here on GMSA. Still, still ahead, how our crew is getting in and all, all the love. Oh, Nora! And getting your sushi to go, but in a very different way. Up next on GMSA, David Elder showing us where you can grab some do-it-yourself sushi kits right here in San Antonio. Would you try it? Bless you. Uh, this, I don't know if I can. Oh yeah, bless, bless me. I don't, I don't know if I can We're do that successfully. <laughs> Taking a look outside with Trans Guide, uh, pretty quiet right now. There's a 281 in Grayson, uh, but if you are headed out, be careful. Well, it is National Pets Day, so I thought we could take a look at Fido's forecast to the dog walking forecast for the day today shouldn't be pretty nice. You won't have to worry about rain. There may be a few sprinkles out there this morning, and we do have a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm, but really honestly, the, the forecast is going to be okay today. Staying cloudy, uh, we may see a few peaks of sunshine into the afternoon, and we'll be looking at a high temperature near 80 degrees in the afternoon. Tonight should be nice as well, but it is late tonight after midnight that we have the potential for some scattered storms, some of which could become strong or severe. But today should be nice. I know the parks are closed for Easter weekend, but if you want to take your dog out for the walk in, in your local neighborhood, you should be just fine. I'll be back with a look ahead to Easter in just a few minutes. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Great idea. Take the dog out for a walk. Absolutely. As long as you're staying away from people. <laughs> yes, as long as you're staying away from other people. Thank you, Max. And we have a sneak peek from KSET's Texas Eats, hosted by resident foodie David Elder. That's later today at 10 a.m. Just mm -hmm. a reminder. But before we get to that, we have some reasons to Yay. celebrate today. There she is. Our own Sarah Spivey with her cat, Nora. Nora. Sharing the love right here on KSET 12. Up next, why these furry friends are being featured on Good Morning San Antonio. There. Sort of. Sort of. And, you know, your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> And welcome.
Welcome back. It is 924, about to be 925. Okay, 925. 925. <laughs> and we have a sneak peek from KSET's Texas Eats, hosted by our friend, our hardworking friend, David Elder. That's today at 10 a.m. Yes, and at this clip, David Elder visiting Yellowfish Sushi. It's pretty fantastic, I must say. And he is talking with the co-owner, Brenda, about their do-it-yourself sushi kits that you can do at your house. So we, uh, we provide the ingredients to make three rolls. Um, we give you a set of instructions, but then pretty much it's however you want to mix and match. Very so cool. we give uh, fresh salmon, fresh tuna, some kanikama crab, and then some of our signature sauces that we make here in house. And then you just mix it however you want. Did you make sushi before owning the business or is this something you guys just kind of stumbled upon? And just yeah, <laughs> no, no, like my sushi would probably would come out triangle, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's a lot of fun. And, and the guys that, that we have here, they're, they're They've been doing sushi for sometimes some from their teenage years and they're artists they're fantastic and um, we have wonderful customers so they've always they've always wondered um, like hey can we can we make a roll and then a couple of years ago that's when we were like oh let's give it a try and this is a perfect opportunity to have customers trying at home yeah what a great time to roll it out because everybody's trying to eat at home now right they're not trying to go out what are you thinking I'm thinking that I still like to see it done. I'm scared. I'm scared to try. About to be Max's house of sushi. <laughs> Take pics. Let me know how it goes. I might bring in some leftovers now. Well, oh, there won't no, be leftovers. No, no, no. It's okay. Yeah, <laughs> pictures, pictures. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Well, also, uh, in honor of National Pet Day, a few of us on the GMSA team wanted to share with you all of our furry friends. All right. Take a look. First up, you know what? Why don't you introduce Aww. this one? So this is Gordo with my daughter. Uh, Gordo. Uh, he is supposed to be a Chihuahua, but he does not look like one, and that is why <laughs> we like call him Gordo. Chihuahua. Yeah, aww. And this is Gabby's. Aww, so cute, Gabby's cat. Gabby, what's your pet's name? I think Bailey. No, no, no. This is okay. So Bailey. that was Maritz. That was Marissa's. Now this is Nora. This is Nora. This is Sarah's. Sarah, you want to talk about Nora? She is awesome. <laughs> and chunky. Aww. All right. And today is also the perfect day to donate supplies to a rescue, specifically during this pandemic, which is why many pets are going back to local shelters. So make sure to celebrate that bond and do your part to help make other companion animals living their best lives. I do have to give a shout out. My parents dog actually named Sarah. <laughs> they are now texting me saying, why didn't you ask pictures about for Sarah? Uh -oh. I was like, I did, but I texted you at 525 in the morning. Oh, OK. So that's fair. <laughs> maybe I'll post them on shows for later, later. Maybe not. We'll see. Okay. All right. 927, 65 degrees out there. Plus, keeping an eye out for scammers, a national warning for small business owners who may be considering loans during the economic downfall. Good morning and welcome back. 931 this Saturday, April 11th. Thanks for joining us on this Easter weekend and uh, hope you guys are, stay safe during mm -hmm. the holiday. Absolutely. Yeah. So yesterday we saw some sun. Are we going to see any today, sir? It's going to be hard for us to see much sunshine, but we will be allowed to see some sunshine. A few peaks of sunshine will be possible. But as you can see right now, blanket a cloud cover out there, and those clouds are going to be stubborn. It's 65 degrees. We may see a few uh, sprinkles out there early this morning, but nothing significant on the radar. It is 65 degrees at the airport, 65 in New Braunfels, 67 in Floresville, 65 in Pleasant, 66 rather in Pleasanton, 65 in Divine. Now for San Antonio today, stubborn clouds and an isolated shower or storm is possible only at 20%, but uh, we still will be able to see a temperature near 80 degrees. Southeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now this Easter weekend, Sunday is going to be beautiful Easter day. We're going to quickly clear and it'll be windy with winds from the west at 15 to 25 miles per hour and a high near 84. But tonight there's a chance for severe weather, 40% chance for scattered storms. I'll be back to detail that potential for storms and uh, what parts of the KSAT 12 viewing area have the best chance for severe weather in just a few minutes. Max, Stephanie. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah. Now, during this pandemic, we do have all these great stories of people stepping up and helping out celebrities or just community members. A lot of it's really inspirational. But officials are also sending out a warning about those taking advantage of the situation. ABC's Pierre Thomas has a look as has more on what to look out for. Alicia and Art Coles, like so many others, have had their lives turned upside down by COVID-19. 
their small business that provides office furniture installation has cratered. Our schedule for the coming weeks was full. Um, and to go from being extremely busy to absolutely nothing. To counter the loss of their income, Alicia says she went online to sign up for the government's emergency loan program, then a phishing attempt aimed at stealing their identity. The very type of scam that the FBI has been warning about as the COVID-19 crisis has exploded. According to Stephen Morrell, the chief of the FBI's financial crime section, thousands of complaints are pouring in. Are you surprised that people would sink this low? When there's an opportunity for a criminal, a fraudster to take advantage of something, they will. And with all the confusion, scammers are getting creative. There are websites claiming to be able to track individuals with COVID-19 around you, only to shut down your phone when the app is installed, demanding a ransom payment. We can qualify you to get a free diabetic monitor and a complimentary testing kit for coronavirus. Then the robocalls. We've seen cases that you could call just flat extortion where a, uh, a criminal is contacting an honest person and basically saying that I'm going to come over to your house or find you and I'm going to give you coronavirus. Keith Middlebrook. Keith Middlebrook, an actor whose latest achievement, he alleged, was finding a so-called cure. After studying cell tissue and chemical biology for many years, I've created the cure for COV-19. There is no cure, and Middlebrook has been arrested and charged with attempted wire fraud, accused of promoting a false claim to lure investors. His attorney has said he has no comment at this time. For Good Morning America, Pierre Thomas, ABC News, Washington. And we know now this morning that Amtrak will be getting $1 billion as part of the coronavirus stimulus package. Now, the Transportation Department says that Amtrak's ridership has dropped by more than 90%. There haven't been as many people buying tickets for the coming months, and they've pulled certain routes completely out of service. Now, the $1 billion will be used to help maintain service for its passengers when the economy recovers by paying their employees, buying fuel, and making sure construction and maintenance continues. And 3M, the largest maker of N95 face masks, filed a $45 million price gouging lawsuit against another company. Now in the lawsuit filed, Performance Supply is accused of marking up the price more than 500%. Now 3M says the New Jersey distributor was selling the $1 mask for more than $6 each. Now the case highlights the widespread price gouging that has been alleged during the pandemic. 3M says if it is awarded any damages from the lawsuit, it will donate those funds to COVID relief efforts. And the Lego company has stepped in to make sure healthcare workers are protected from the virus by offering to make protective gear Denmark, the or the Denmark based toy maker says it converted some molding machines to be able to produce 13,000 face visors every day. Now Lego has also donated $50 million towards the relief efforts. The Tyson Food Company says it's employing body scanners to keep the coronavirus out of its plants. Now the poultry company saying it bought more than 150 infrared walkthrough scanners. The devices are already in place at facilities in four states. It can keep consumers safe by the checking of the body temperatures of anyone who walks through them, allowing the workers to continue their normal routine without unnecessary contact. Now the company says this is just one of many precautions it has and it hopes to have at least one in each of its facilities soon. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. All right, well, if you're a football fan and you like spring football, not great news this morning. We are saying goodbye to the XFL again. Now the league laid off all of its employees except for a few members of the executive staff and now announcing it has no plans to return in 2021. All of according to ESPN, the XFL suspending operations just five games into their season because of the pandemic. The XFL was owned by WWE chairman Vince McMahon and was making its second attempt into professional football since 2001. That was until yesterday's conference call with the CEO, Jeffrey Pollock. Now, the shutdown comes on the heels of the failure of the Alliance of American Football. We all know the San Antonio Commanders. Now, that happened in 2019 and again, didn't make it past one season. All right, time to talk the Cowboys. After losing Robert Quinn to free agency, the Dallas Cowboys spent the offseason signing veterans Gerald McCoy and Don Tari Poe and 
Alden Smith beefing up that Dallas defense. Now McCoy and Dontari Poe on the defensive line. And Alden Smith, if he is reinstated, he will be a big feature for linebacker. All right, this is all while Tyron Crawford looks to return from surgery on both hips after missing most of last season. And, well, if all three are ready to contribute, this could be a big deal. I know we definitely just got three beasts. Um, you know, I don't, I haven't touched base with them yet, but, um, you know, I know the players they are and I know what they can do. And uh, so, yeah, we got some, we got some animals that we just signed. So luck to have them. And yeah, man, this D-line should be pretty scary. All right. Also, the draft is set to go on as scheduled, but it's going to be a virtual NFL draft. So it's funny, uh, like reading Different. all the, the draft guides, it's like, <laughs> It's more preparation because a lot of these coaches have never used Zoom or any of like the virtual right. things that we're still learning right yeah, now. Yeah, we're uh, doing things a different way, most mm -hmm. definitely. New times. Yes. 938, 65 degrees out. And coming together for musicians who are taking a big hit during this outbreak. Still ahead, who is at the center of the latest online business? And like we talked about earlier, during these tough times, people are stepping up and helping out, lending a helping hand. We are gonna take a look at how people are helping out in our community. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. It's gonna be a little muggy today, but after some showers, Sarah said, it might be a nice Easter Sunday. So we're gonna check in with her for the full details of your weekend forecast. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. People across San Antonio have stepped up and helped out to those who have needs and those who have been affected by this pandemic. RJ Marquez tells us about the good things being done in our community in the week of 210. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center announces it's participating in a federal program to begin collecting plasma from people who have recovered from COVID-19. Researchers believe the antibodies found in that plasma could help those still suffering. If it's such a simple thing as giving plasma so that someone else cannot go through it or they can lessen or take them off a ventilator or something, uh, we should all be doing that. You must be symptom free for at least a couple of weeks to donate plasma. Email COVID-19 at SouthTexasBlood.org for more information. HEB is delivering more than 75,000 meals to healthcare workers across Texas over the next five weeks. 600 HEB simple microwavable meals were dropped off today at Krista Santa Rosa Hospital Medical Center. Every bit of help to them not only helps them, but shows that the community appreciates what they're doing. And, you know, sometimes just that thank you, in addition to this, is really helping people get through this. This is a part of HEB's charitable investment where they have donated more than a million dollars and truckloads of meals. Rebecca Creek is known for its vodka and whiskey. Now the distillery is getting into a new charitable business. Rebecca Creek started creating sanitizer that's being donated to first responders. The responders are out there calling on everybody. They need to be protected. So this is, this is you know, they're a great community for us. So this is what we could do to help out. Shifting production also gives employees the opportunity to continue working through the pandemic. USAA is helping members during the pandemic. The San Antonio-based company will return money to members who have an auto insurance policy. People who have an auto insurance policy will receive 20% credit on two months of premiums in the coming weeks. A San Antonio family is not allowing the pandemic to break their bond and tradition. Abel Valdez posted a tweet of his family surprising his 83-year-old mother Erminia at her home on the west side. Valdez said his mother has not left the house or had any visitors. Her children, grandkids, and great-grandchildren decided to surprise her with a parade so she could see everyone. And that was RJ Marquez with KSAT News yeah. at 9, our digital streaming platform. They're doing a lot of cool, unique stuff on there. It was very cool to see that parade. Mm -hmm. So happy belated birthday. Yeah. Happy belated birthday. All right, speaking of news at nine, Sarah Spivey's part of that team. <laughs> yeah, uh, Katie Blake and I do the weather for the news at nine on the digital newscast. So we love that show and we also love the weather. So let's go ahead and talk about the weather. It is cloudy outside right now and it's going to stay cloudy for us for most of the day. We may see a few peaks of sunshine, but that's about it. I'm also seeing a few water droplets there on the live cam. So there could be some areas of sprinkles, but there's nothing substantial on the radar at the moment that could change later on tonight in the overnight hours. But for now, just know that it's gray with 
areas of sprinkles 65 at the airport 65 in New Braunfels 68 in Castroville 63 in Bandera wider view here at 68 out in Gonzales uh, 65 in Yavaldi 69 in Del Rio and 67 in Pleasanton winds are generally from the east or from the southeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour notice Rock Springs and Del Rio winds sustained at 15 miles per hour now we're going to tap into that Gulf of Mexico moisture really bringing in the high humidity later on today and that's going to be one of the ingredients for storms overnight. But first, what you need to know is that today going to be muggy with a few peaks of afternoon sun, 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm and a high temperature near 80 degrees. Southeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. I want to show you the future cast, all right, because I want to transition and talk about the potential for some strong to severe storms, especially west and north of San Antonio. Now this is late tonight, right at around midnight, and you can see a broken line of storms will develop out near Del Rio right around midnight. Keyword there being broken line of storms. Not everybody is going to see storms, but some people will and some of these storms as they move off to the east will become strong or severe with right ahead of that line watching out for the potential for gusty winds of up to 60 miles per hour and right within that line uh, the potential for some quarter sized hail. Now, the best time frame for San Antonio to see storms is from about 3 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the morning. And as we go through time, what you can see is areas like Seguin, Floresville, and Pleasanton by about 5 or 6 in the morning could also see that line of storms with the potential for some uh, stronger storms as well. But what I believe is that west of San Antonio, we're going to have the best chance for severe weather. And then very quickly, we're going to clear out on Easter Sunday. It'll be windy and it'll be a uh, sunny just about everywhere you look uh, and so it's going to be a pretty nice Easter Sunday after we get through uh, that round of storms and with storms that develop overnight into early Sunday morning hail and wind will be the main threats there with up to quarter sized hail possible and also some gusty winds of up to 60 miles per hour coverage is not going to be widespread we're only going with a 40 percent chance for storms in the overnight hours around San Antonio and as for the rest of the risks yes there is going to be a a very slight risk for a tornado, but the main concerns are going to be hail and wind. We'll keep an eye on that. Again, Easter Sunday, it'll be sunny and windy. We'll clear out and we'll be warm. West winds at 15 to 25 miles per hour. In the afternoon, we should be able to see a high temperature in the mid 80s. Uh, get, again, it's going to be pretty gusty and with that dry wind, dry air in place, just be on the lookout for the potential for uh, fire weather danger. So try not to do any outside burning. I know uh, camping is not going to be allowed, so that'll help out with the fire risk for sure. Now, temperatures. We're going to be seeing uh, morning lows in the 40s early next week because of a front that'll move through. That's going to be pretty chilly, but also pretty nice for people who enjoy a morning walk or a morning run. And all next week, we will have tons of sunshine. Going to be a beautiful week next week. We'll keep an eye on that severe threat tonight. Max, Stephanie. Thank you so much, Sarah. All right, thank you, Sarah. 949, 65 degrees out. And helping fellow musicians who may be struggling during the pandemic. Up next, how the Grateful Dead is lending a helping hand. And yeah, take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, three, four, fireball, one, daily four, two, one, three, five, fireball, one. Cash five, 10, 11, 13, 18, 32. And you're making millions. Two, 11, 21, 57, 60, mega ball, 13. Mega Plier 2. Good luck. Good morning and welcome back. 9.52 this Saturday morning. The Grateful Dead are launching a new streaming service aimed at benefiting musicians who have been affected by this pandemic. CNN's Rick Damagella has that story and more in today's look at streaming entertainment. You know I love when I feel The Grateful Dead are launching a weekly streaming series to benefit musicians affected by the coronavirus pandemic. Shakedown Stream features a filmed performance and a pre-show hosted by the Dead's archivist where audiences can donate to Music Care's COVID-19 relief fund. The first gig is this performance from July 4th, 1989 in Buffalo, New York. The series premieres Friday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern on the Dead's YouTube channel. I used to roll the dice. 
Los Angeles indie artist The Next Doors are playing a free show on Facebook. The husband and wife duo will perform a mix of originals and cover tunes. Head over to bit.ly slash next doors at 8.30 p.m. Saturday to check out the show. Wrap up your weekend at the Altar of Rock with The Struts. The English Rockers are hosting Sunday Service, a live concert series from the band members' homes in Los Angeles where they are self-isolating. Shows take place Sundays at 3 p.m. Eastern on The Struts' YouTube channel. Streaming in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. And speaking of The Struts, their vocalist, Luke Spiller, also hosting Quarantine Radio on the band's Instagram page where he plays some of the favorite songs and even does some question and answers with fans. That's pretty cool. And Quarantine Radio goes live Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Time now, 9.54, 65 degrees up. Let's take a look at some birthdays this weekend. This is Nathaniel, 11 years old. Happy birthday. So Nathaniel is nephew of Henry from our engineering department here at KSET at 12. And we have another birthday. And this one also very special, Aww. Tori. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Tori. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Actually, virtual hugs and kisses. Virtual hugs and kisses. I just texted <laughs> her about 8,000 gifts and hopefully it overwhelmed her a little bit. <laughs> Happy birthday, Tori. Keep sending in your birthday pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. And remember to include a name and what you want for your birthday because Max will buy it for you. We'll be right back. <clears throat> News you need to know before you go this morning, a spike in confirmed coronavirus cases here in Bear County. We are now at 665 confirmed cases, up 50 more than Thursday evening. The total death toll related to COVID-19 in our county now at 24. Those cases include a VIA bus driver, a SAWS employee, several HEB employees, and five San Antonio police officers, and now 16 Bear County Sheriff's employees. The Sheriff's Office does not believe any additional detention officers were affected. And it's the first inmate to test positive for COVID-19 at the jail. They are now in isolation. The Sheriff's Office says none of the other inmates housed with the patient have shown any symptoms, but they are taking precautions if other symptoms arise. And what's the best way to face our fears? Tomorrow on GMSA, we talk about facing fears of COVID-19. And taking a look at the forecast today, we'll have stubborn clouds out there uh, with the uh, cloud cover sticking around through about the lunch hour. Then we'll see a couple peaks of sunshine in the afternoon. Isolated shower or storm is possible. Southeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Then late tonight, there's going to be a small potential uh, uh, for a few severe thunderstorms between about six, uh, 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. around San Antonio and to points north of San Antonio, but it will call it about a 40% chance around the uh, Alamo City. And now we will clear out really quickly on Sunday. It'll be beautiful for Easter. Uh, it'll be sunny. It'll be windy with winds from the west at about 15 to 25 miles per hour. And then during the week, really nice behind a cold front. Sunshine, temperatures in the 60s for highs. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Thank, Thank you so much you. for watching. Have a great rest of your weekend. Have a good Saturday.